Hello, welcome to Showing Up with Pam, episode 10. Today's a great day. I have a good friend of mine joining us, and I have a feeling this one's going to be pretty entertaining. Without further ado, I would like to introduce you to Ritu Ward. Ritu has extensive subject matter expert. She is an extensive sub subject matter expert, forgive me, um, leveraging clinical knowledge, leadership, quality assurance, and tactical implementation strategy to implement continuous improvement within large healthcare organizations. She's recognized as a results-driven leader with the ability to align customized solutions with defined business requirements. She has a master of arts in both uh, biology and medical technology. She also is a Six Sigma black belt, has her PMP, her A3 problem solving certification. She's a board member. She's chairperson of Mercy Women in Leadership and she's a fellow for the American College of Healthcare and Executives. Very decorated, Ms. Ritu. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me today. Oh, it is my pleasure. How are you doing? I am doing well. It's been a e good day. Excellent. So I start off with my signature, signature question. Um, can you tell me who has been showing up for you lately? You know what, Pam? I've had to think about that, of course, the general public is large, friends, mm -hmm. specific individuals that I have good relationships with have been showing up. Mm -hmm. But I think more importantly, I've been showing up for myself <gasps> in very wow. different ways. Okay. Very different. So we'll, I want to talk about that just mm -hmm. one, a little bit because through this gap phase and the pandemic and everything that else is going on, mm -hmm. I've really had to dig deep and understand how many facets there are of Ritu, and some I might not have liked very much, and I think you know what those might be, <laughs> and <laughs> they are, uh, but they've become strengths. So I've had to talk to myself and show up for myself. Mm, wow. <laughs> so are you, because I know you are a reader, and I know mm -hmm. that I remember a lot about you. I remember you got very little sleep, which really drove me crazy because you would say, oh, about four or five hours is good. And I just thought, no, <laughs> not even. So are, are you still in that mode? I know you've already, you, you always have done a lot of reading. Do you find yourself doing more of that, more research, more studying, more fun yeah. reading or, or something else? I find myself doing a little bit of all of that. Um, I, that's the only way I know to keep myself relevant. Right. And during January through March, I was being very relevant and finding out everything I could about the test and the knowledge of it mm -hmm. and supply chain, everything else. And I've also been focused on developing myself, um, mm -hmm. always improving the next day, right? So going back to the lean principles of reflecting and sometimes when I reflect upon my day mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I'm doing a lot of feeling, reflecting on feelings and how do I feel about all of this? Um, what part do I play in it and then go read. So don't ask me for a list of all the books because I am reading a lot online <laughs> and I saw your whole big board of reading and I tried to keep up with you and uh, no, did not happen. Well, no, wow. let's just set this record straight, shall we? Okay. Okay. I'm the reader. Okay. And at one point I was a reader and that person left and so I had these beautiful bookshelves of books that sat there. Okay. And you know, having worked with Toyota and understanding more and more about the lean principles, I started looking around and looked at waste in my home. Yep. And I kept looking at my bookshelves thinking, okay, why am I buying books and not reading them? If yep. that's not a waste, I don't know what is. Because first of all, or two, who is gonna see these lovely books? Am I trying to impress somebody? That's not coming over anyway. So. Yep. So then what's the point? And I got frustrated and I decided, you know what? I'm changing. And so that's where the whole, you know, lean life and reading and trying to, you know, I think that says the average person reads 12 books a year, which to me sounded Herculean as far as the feet. And I thought, well, I can at least do that. And I think <laughs> I'm up to 14 so far this year. So I was trying oh, to get, wow. to yeah. But I, I mean, I them. It, it takes a village. Let me tell you. <laughs> <For me too. laughs> audiobooks, all kinds of stuff. But yeah, it's, you know, I, I think I've kind of done what you've done where you just have some, some time to kind of look inside and inward and figure out 
how can you be better and what are you doing that's sort of not working for you and try to right. twist so i totally understand that and managing my time better mm. i can easily get fascinated by the flowers in the yard you know? <laughs> There's a lot of waste there too with weeds. Got to pull them out. <laughs> so if I recall, you're not ever much of a TV watcher. Are you still not much of a watcher or have you, have you added that to your repertoire? No, <laughs> I am not. <laughs> See, if this, is, this is why I thought Ritu was an alien because I'm watching TV all the time. She's not watching anything. <laughs> no, when you came in and said, did you happen to see that show? What show? Why? <laughs> So the funny thing is because we have we're, we're we're different but we're the same. So like I said, she was a reader, not so much over here. I'm all over the television, not so much over there. But yet we seem to click really well. Let's talk about how we first met Ritu. Um, I don't remember the year, but I remember I went to go work with a pathology group, and you did as well. And that's how we sort of got acquainted. What is your uh, remembrance of us? <laughs> Getting to know my remembrances of a very tall person with a big <laughs> smile, just like yourself right now, bright and beautiful, walking in and saying, so, who are you? <laughs> well, okay. That sounds about right. Yeah. Right. And then it converted into, we used to have lots of talks and I think it just bonded there. You, you were trying to define and find out what your next steps would be. And I was trying to figure it out. I mean, we're talking 20 years ago now. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, very young in our minds, very mm -hmm. inquisitive. So that has not changed. You're still very inquisitive, uh, very outgoing, and you're always on the cutting edge. And mm -hmm. I remember distinctly having a conversation about well, what's all this about process improvement? I mean, you know, and look at you now. Oh, yeah. Your master, Harada trainer, my coach. And that has got to be the most valuable story I'll carry for the rest of my life. Oh, it is. That I'm is sure you're right. proud of some students, and now you're my coach. So, what much? What more can we ask for? Yeah, I'm gonna we need to sit with time. that. I need to sit with that a minute, okay? Because <laughs> that is just—if you had told me then, one day, you know, you're gonna be helping Ritu out, coaching her a little bit, I would have said, "This Ritu? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 no. That, that, that that is really something. You know, for me, I remember." that we hit it off and i really liked where your office was where we were because yeah. i know for me work was challenging and i would just come and sit in your office and we would talk and there were days where we would point like okay it's a lunch day and we would go have lunch just to kind of connect and kind of get out any frustrations and calm down and relax and then go back to work all cheery <laughs> we can do anything you know um <laughs> yeah i remember we used to go to mimi's cafe yes and we would get the muffins so that has not changed. I'm still a social butterfly. Um, I've added a little bit of wine to that. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> it's showing up for me in fun ways and connecting and building relationships in fun ways, I've kind of carried that through as I built my teams forward. Okay. It, it resonates with me. And all the tokens you shared with me, my language of love, pink cup, a pen here, a cross <laughs> there, keep the faith. I think we were really having a bad day that day. And I slid it in my desk drawer and some days I haven't had a desk. It's just been a cubicle, but it's been around there somewhere in my briefcase. So oh, that. that is so sweet. I remember, I remember you were, you liked flowers. You were big into flowers. Yes. So on my way to work, I would go in Capel down um, Denton Tap Road. I would stop at the Tom Thumb there for folks who <laughs> understand that. And I would pick up these little base of flowers and I would bring you flowers. And I know people working with us were wondering, why is she giving her flowers? Exactly. And my answer was, because she likes them. <laughs> it made their room brighter. I still do. There's still flowers everywhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I also remember leaving my wallet at that uh, Tom Thumb once. Oh, and they wow. I called yeah. and they had it and it was no big deal. And I just remember, I'm going to be loyal to Tom Thumb because they take care of you. <laughs> Well, see, back to connecting, right? Is mm -hmm. uh, building the trust. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, you talked a little bit about, you know, January, February, March, and what is going on in our world today. And I'm curious for two, because you know, Alex, who's now 11, by the way, my son. Oh, I'm uh, getting every, old. 
every few days I get something new from the school district. Yes, we're starting. Okay, we're only starting some in person. Okay, wait, we're going to wait three weeks and do, go online and stuff. So my gut is telling me this is going to take a while. And no matter what they say they're doing today, they have no idea what they're really going to do. It's too soon to tell. And so my gut is saying it's going to be a while before he sees anybody in person in school. And that's okay. But I guess my question to you is, what does your gut say? And also, if you were me, would you feel comfortable letting him go with the precautions and so forth, the masks and everything, to a public school to actually learn in person anytime soon? So I happen to know a little bit about Alex. I know him. So I know that he's a very smart kid and he will do fine either way. Thank you. Putting on my healthcare hat, I would say everybody, including you and me, are suffering emotionally, professionally mm -hmm. to a certain degree, and right. still trying to challenge and work that out. Mm -hmm. And I think our kids will see that. Mm -hmm. And you've always been honest with Alex. So I think weighing out the pros and cons, ultimately, it's got to be your decision, safety first, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we take risks from the day we had them. My son is 34 and my worries for him do not change, right? Although he has a mind of his own, a mom's heart always says, let's protect them. So I would say, and I've had other friends struggle with that. Mm -hmm. And my thing is, you know your child best. If he's very mm -hmm. healthy and you want to test it out, go for it. If not, be precautious and, and keep him home. Okay. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I think everything is working out virtually now well. Mm -hmm. The social skills, I get that. Right. right. You know, it's hard to create a balance. It's hard to create a balance for us. I like the social aspect. We're staying up evenings just chatting virtually. But sooner mm -hmm. or later, you got to have that virtual hug. It's just not working out. <laughs> yeah. Right? It's true. So I don't know if I answer your question, but. No. No, I think you did really well. Um. So I know you are looking for your next venture. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask you a little bit about that, if there was something specific that you wanted to do, because given your, your vast knowledge and all the different things you can do, is there something that kind of calls to you? Are you kind of like, you know, I'm not sure I did this, now I want to go over here. Kind of wh where are you with that? So I'm going to let faith play a big part in that. All I, have, I think I have done is prepared myself for the challenge. Okay. My passions remain inspiring others through living it myself, whether it's good or bad. Teaching, that's always been there, right? And right, serving. Right. And at Mercy, I had the most incredible career with going back to a faith-based organization. It was phenomenal. Wow. Um, I connected with the sisters there, even mm -hmm. though they're not the leaders in the administrative role, they support it. Mm -hmm. um, and I found that my faith was much stronger than I would have ever believed it to be and led from the heart. So now I would like to pivot, really, and go more into process improvement, mm -hmm. help individuals and organizations think through what their new norm should be. And mm -hmm. I really get frustrated when people say, I, I wish I could things could go back to normal. Mm -hmm. They're not going to go back. Let's talk about bouncing forward, right? right? Let's right. bounce right. forward. And if, what an opportunity to take a look at every process step mm -hmm. and understand if it's really necessary. Mm. I think it's time to give all our processes back to the frontline coworkers. Let the leaders get out of the way, let them build it mm -hmm. and be there to support it. So I, that would be more exciting to me. And I don't know what that looks like yet. Okay. Uh, well, no, that, I like that. It sounds like you're very open, and that's that's good because you know we don't know what the universe has planned. We don't know what pivots are coming. It seems like every day I'm reading about now and other companies letting folks stay home till the end of next year, and you know it's funny to me because I remember at some point folks didn't want you to work home that much because they were worried about the productivity and are you taking advantage and how will everyone else feel because you're at home now and right. And now it's the norm. It's just <laughs> crazy to me. It is. <laughs> and you remember I, when we were talking about we can't send client services home? What are you talking about, Richard? It wasn't that far an idea. <laughs> yeah. 
And to be to be honest, I do know I'm working harder than I normally would because I've cut out, you know, 30, 45 minutes of commute and having to feel like I've got to run and go take maybe Alex somewhere and then go do this. And all those errands you thought you had to do, mm -hmm. they seem to have vanished. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. I go to the grocery store once a week and I go super early before everybody else gets there. That's it. <laughs> exactly. That's, it. That's all you need. Yeah. Right. How simple life has become. It has. Yeah. And, you know, for me, I think the big thing was I started on this path of, of professional development, of trying to find new things that I could do more about me. And one of the things I made sure I said to myself was no matter what happens in December, you know, I want to look back and not even know who I am anymore. I don't want to sit there and say, oh, you know, COVID. So, you know, I did the best I could. Because to me, you know, that's not how I was raised. I wasn't raised to just kind of, okay, just take it easy. When everything's perfect, then you can get out there and try stuff. It's right. like, no, you try stuff now. <laughs> and if it doesn't work, you just try something else. So I have a challenging question for you. Uh, are you journaling? Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> she got me. <laughs> you knew I would. <laughs> I'm, I'm mentally journaling. Does that oh, count? That, does that um, count, Pam? <laughs> you know, you you bring up a good point. Point, and I actually had a, a class with uh, one of my instructors who gave us journals and talked about the importance of journaling. And there are times when I write things down. I took a class from Marty, Martin Seligman, the father of positive psychology, and one of the things he said that changed his life was journaling mm -hmm. and how just writing down three things that he was grateful for or that went well that day changed his whole attitude, how he treated his family. It, I mean, it was monumental for him. So of course I started doing that and it fell off a little bit. <laughs> Maybe mentally I think about it and I, I recognize that, but you, you are right. That is something I, I want to bring back because honestly, the next thing I'm thinking about Ritu is writing a book. And I've, you know, it'll probably be a lot about what I've gone through in my life, but I realized that Somehow it's going to have to get on paper one way or another. Exactly. I can't just call someone and say, okay, chapter two, here's what happened. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that is definitely something I need to improve. I know you're in journal. How many journals do you have or two? Oh, I, I don't even want to say because I have not been perfect. Imagine that. Um, mm -hmm. I fell off, fell into it, but I did find that even some of my friends that are not in the lean journey or anything, they say, I wish... Mm -hmm. I had documented how I felt in the beginning. So I know where we are today. Oh, and, you know, one of my mentors, you know, me, I will question everything to death. It's like, why do I have to do this? I know what I'm feeling. And says, you know what? It, it's, you would be surprised. If I go back and flip six or seven months and read it, one, I find out, my gosh, how dumb was I? I was saying these things. <laughs> this is hilarious stuff because, <laughs> you are a lot of things, Missy, but you are not. <laughs> no, but I can tell where my senseis were probably laughing. Like, uh -huh. I tease him all the time now. I said, Can you mm -hmm. just go back to your office for a quick break and say, ha, ha, ha. right? Um, but in all seriousness, it does show you how you've evolved. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's a measurement of your mental stability and resilience. Mm -hmm. And you do fall back. So, um, yeah, I find. I find peace in that. Mm, okay. I like that. Speaking of peace, nice segue. Yeah. Um, what would you say is your greatest inspiration? Or where do you get your greatest inspiration from? How's that? Well, quite a few friends. You know, I've got, I've surrounded myself with individuals that I go to that'll say you're doing great. And there are others that'll say, hey, you need a kick in the pants. Mm -hmm. um, one of my biggest learnings has come from my son. He just visited this last weekend and I can't tell you how much I've learned from him, just his energy and resilience and just knowing his struggles. Like I saw him sit through, Hey, it's impacting my business too. And where his mind is at mm -hmm. that inspires me that if he can do it and he can teach me your children becoming, you know, my friends are becoming my coaches and my child is becoming my teacher. What next? 
and I married my mentor. So, you know, Tony, and, yes. but mostly I get my inspiration from spending time with myself mm. and reflecting on the successes of the others and saying, you know, like I'll reflect on our conversation later on tonight and say, Pam said this and let how inspiring because she must have gone through something mm. to come to that conclusion. Mm. And I'm curious about what did you go through? What was that like? Mm -hmm. You know, so that I can do it differently. Now, back in the day, we would have said their life is so much better. My gosh, you know, jealousy and we all those feelings come up, but right, you've got right. to turn it around and turn it. Now, what it, what gifts do they have mm -hmm. that makes them that special? Mm -hmm. And that's inspiring. You know, it's interesting you bring that up because I think on some level, if I look at the old me, there were things that I thought were important and relevant or that I wanted or wanted to be. And one of the things I've realized is that a lot of that's not true. <laughs> and the assumption is with those things you see, you think that they're bringing all this joy and happiness to the people who have them. And guess what? Not so much. Not so much. I am um, in having, I've been studying positive psychology for the last few months and it's interesting because I've learned that the things you think are going to make you happy, like there, there was a, the, the class that's taught is taught at Yale. And so uh, Professor Santos is talking to the students and say, OK, what do you think is going to make you happy? And they'll say, like, getting good grades, getting married, having you know a good car, a good job, making a lot of money. So they've got all these things. And so she gives the example about, OK, well, I bet one of your goals was to get accepted to Yale. Right. And of course, you know, it's a great school. And she asked them, so did you wake up this morning saying, oh, my God, I feel so grateful that I got into Yale. Oh, wow. No. And the reason is because you sort of hit that point where you get to the excitement and then it levels off. And in particular, when you want things, that happens more frequently. But mm -hmm. one of the things that they say makes you happier and it's sustainable are experiences. So it's not the thing like I got the new car and now it's just a car, but it's, you know, I got to go visit my family over the holidays and it was so great catching up. And for me, through this show or being on different social media, I've connected with people and I've been able to bring that bond back. And to me, that's the stuff that really makes me happy, that makes me feel like I'm doing the right thing. Right. Not, you know, in particular, all that material stuff, you know? Well, coffee matters. So just let's keep <laughs> it in perspective, right? No, I'm making fun of it, but you hit it right on nail on the head that um, mm -hmm. things that were important to me when I was going and blowing and building my career. Mm -hmm. um, you know what, at the end of the day in this gap phase, I've had to answer the question, for what? Mm. For what? Right. So you can, I can add all these titles and alphabets behind my name. Who is it for and right. what did I get? Where's my piece in it? Yeah. And it's the learning and you're absolutely right. Failing, acknowledging that, picking yourself back up. Mm -hmm. um, not saying I look forward to it, but it happens. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what makes us who we are. And this is my fourth country I've lived and grown in. So, you know, it, there's a lot of change and a lot of things you pick up. Do you still collect animals, like little elephants and things? Yes, of course. <laughs> and I have all the ones you gave me strategically placed everywhere. <laughs> Would you believe elephants are my friends? I bought some that may be in a box somewhere, just so you know. I'm just saying, <laughs> I'll find them for you. <laughs> I tell you what, you commit to doing a journal, and I'll commit to accepting an elephant. Husband. Oh my gosh, she put me on the spot, y'all. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, um, I recently started teaching a new class of students the Harada method, which is one of those things that kind of helped me pivot. And this lady right here signed up for my class, which is an honor to me because, oh. like you said, I've learned so much from her. And for her to now just want to be in my class, it, it's kind of weird. Like, are you auditing? What's is, Did someone send you? You know, what's going on? I believe I was invited and you <laughs> used the word audit. What is she talking about? Audit? No, audit. Sometimes people will not really take the class, but they're kind of like watching and they just kind of want to observe everything. No, I'm all in. <laughs> Did you do the homework, Missy? Oh, it'll be done by Saturday. <laughs> oh, my goodness. 
That is too funny. Um, did you have any questions you might have for me? It's been more my, me asking than you asking. So is there anything you want to know? I would just like to close it on. Uh, what has been your greatest accomplishment so far? And, you know, it's funny you say that because one of the exercises in my, my day one of classes, I asked the students what their biggest accomplishment is. And I asked them to write it on a big sheet of paper and then put it on their, their shirt. So whether they use big tape or a binder clip, I ask them to do it. And so they do it. So first, some struggle to find it, which is fine because we don't usually think about those things. And then, you know, they're wearing it and I can just see they're uncomfortable. And I say, so what if I asked you to wear that the rest of the day? What would you do? Oh, no, I could never do that. What would they think? What would my family think? And I'm like, it's your family. Tell them you're doing an exercise. I want you to go to the grocery store with it on. Oh no, I could never do that. And the reason we do this is because I'm trying to show them that you've got some great things you've achieved, but you're afraid to sort of share it. You're afraid of the, what would everyone think nonsense, you know? Mm -hmm. And you've got to find a way to get past that. And I think that's one of the things that's propelling me is when I started the show and I started the podcast, I'm not thinking, wow, what would everyone think when I do this? Because guess what? It doesn't really matter what they think. For me, I'm doing it for me. I'm hoping to help someone. And I know people who care about me. If something is going crazy, they will say, uh, Pam, we need to talk. You need to, we can't do this. Anymore. Oh, they're still doing that. I like it. <laughs> and um, I, I'm comforted to know that I'm doing the right thing. So right. getting rid of the critic and the voice and all of that, that's been big for me. But for me, I think I would have said that I made, I'm an Olympian. So that's like a big deal. We made the Olympic team. That's my biggest accomplishment. But now as I've matured, I honestly feel like my greatest accomplishment is my son. Good. Because he's it for me. And I tell him, you know, if I've had a bad day at work, or if I had trouble with some things, you know, all I have to do is see him and it all falls on the table. It's like, he doesn't care about any of that. He just wants to chat with mommy and what's for dinner. And you know, I mean, these yeah, are the, exactly. the critical decisions I have to make. So the perspective you get, I think when you kind of pivot and become a parent is, I can't even put it into words. So that's what I would say. What would you say to the same question? I think I would answer it the same way. I knew, I knew you would put me back on the spot with a reverse <laughs> question. I uh -huh. would not give you anything that I have accomplished so far as being my highest accomplishment than to say the unconditional love mm -hmm. that we give to our kids in our spouses. Um, that's what matters throughout my journey. The only thing that has kept me, you know, up and above has been Tony's consistently there. Mm -hmm. I have ups and downs and, and, you know, when kids grow up, Alex is still with you, mm -hmm. you, you worry about them, but to get back to that fundamental thing, I haven't accomplished it yet. Mm -hmm. um, but I know that if I find my inner peace and I'm able to pass forward what has mm -hmm. been graciously passed to me, mm -hmm. then, th mm -hmm. then that's good. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's, that's where you have to, everything else, the skills and the classes and everything, we'll all get those. If you put your mind to it, you can do it. I think that's a great Yes. I think so too. Thank you so much fun. for joining me. You're on the 10th episode. That's a great number. So this is important. <laughs> and uh, I appreciate it. And I can look forward to continue to learn and grow with you as a part of my life. Same here. Take care. You too.